um, Knit Hour with Latvian May. This is a new version of our virtual knit nights that we're going to start doing. Um, I would, I just really, when I was out on tour, everyone kept asking me, when are you going to start doing your virtual events again? And so I thought, I talked with Julia and we thought, well, let's, let's do our knit nights again. And we wanted to bring back our knitting friends, Zach and Justin, and obviously our knitting guru friend, Nancy, <laughs> to come join us for the first knit hour with La Bien Aimé. We hope to actually do these on a regular basis. Um, I know that Justin and Zach travel a lot, so I will just be messaging them be like, hey guys, you happen to be free wherever you are in the world. So we will be um, including all of our social media handles if you want to follow us. Um, actually, we could probably throw these into the chat for those of you who, who are here live, and we'll definitely include these in the comments below when we put this up on YouTube. Um, I'm going to go around and introduce everyone. So my name is Amy. I'm the owner of La Vienne Aimée based here in Paris, France, and I work with Julia Taylor. She helps me with communications and lots of other things here at La Vienne Aimée. Um, and she works with me here in my office in Paris. Um, we have our good knitting friend, Zachary Wilder, an ex-team LBA member um, who is joining us from Paris. And you're like literally home for 24 hours? Well, uh, I'm 48. I leave tomorrow for the Netherlands. <laughs> um, Justin, or uh, Zach is a professional opera singer and he travels around the world and he knits all over the place. And so we're going to get to ask him questions about that. <laughs> Next, we have Justin Kim, who is home for five minutes. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and he too is a professional opera singer and he is an ex team LVA member as well. Um, I just want to say like during the pandemic, things were really difficult and we all kind of like lost our jobs and lost our team members. And I was really happy to have Zach and Justin come and help me keep my team and build my team during that time. So that's when they were helping out at LVA. And last we have, but the best Nancy <laughs> Marchant. <laughs> joining Ooh. us from I can never pronounce the town that you live in now the Hague the Hague but more oh, in yeah, yeah. yeah yeah I mean yeah so from the Hague and um most of us know Nancy for being the queen of brioche um she has been a major influence knit influence on me especially for my latest adventures in Intarja and we are all coming together to kind of talk about what we've been knitting, what we've been doing recently. Um, this is like the first time that like Julia and Zach have seen each other in over a year. So we're going to be doing a little catch up session. Um, I thought that we would start by going around and maybe talking about what knitwear we're wearing. So I'll start with Nancy. Nancy, what do you got on tonight? I have on my little bandana. Oh, very I'm gonna good. I'll, I'll take it off because. Uh... Yeah, I, I was one of the first, I think I test knitted it. You did. You know, and I had, I just used um, La Bien Ami yarns that I had, and I didn't have enough of one color for like a base yarn. So I had like three brownish gray, you know, so I, I uh, marled everything, but I made little triangles, as you can see, there are little triangles that travel down and then the very tip. I just, you can't see it because I'm in a dark dress, but there's just a little, tip oh. of the dark, bright blue. And then mm -hmm. I just went back and took the triangles back. So uh, yeah, this is my little bandana. That's what I made. Very fun. What um, yarn did you use? Well, it's all La Bien Ami, Helix, Felix, Boucle, uh, sort of <laughs> a little bit of, yeah, whatever. A little bit of everything. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's fun. It's really a fun, fun little project. Thank you. I've really enjoyed knitting this. I've been knitting it nonstop. So I'll show you mine. I think this is like my 10th or 11th. Yes, Julia. <laughs> we have a question for Nancy from the chat. Oh, question for Nancy. Is that Intarja? Yes, yes. this is Intarja. And the, the these little triangles down here, mm. all along the edges, that's what makes it Intarja. That means it's mm. a separate, you know, it's not uh, stranded anywhere. It's just a separate little area of color. And uh, this little bandana is a real good way to make, yeah, Amy's got all kinds of examples of little intarsia areas that are placed on the surface mm -hmm. of the fabric. Yeah. Yeah. Like this. Great. Yeah. Z um, not Zach. Justin, what are you knitting right now? What am I knitting? Um, this is uh, Olga's um, Issei thing. And oh my gosh, this thing is 
it's never ending. It's so big. <laughs> and because <laughs> let me hold on. One, oh two, my. three. I'm just past halfway point oh. and I'm on ball number five of like eight or something. <laughs> oh my God, that's a sweater. That but but it is epic massive. But um, it's a really good travel knit and also really great rehearsal knit because I don't need to look at the pattern. It's just very, I, once you get used to it, it's very simple and also very easy to pick out the mistakes because oh. um, the structure of everything is so sharp and crisp that if I accidentally skip something or if I um, purl instead of knit, it just shows up like also the colors you know it's like neon <laughs> and in your face <laughs> so um, it's been really great because I only had to fix it like go back and do some surgery like twice uh, and that's pretty nice. good for um, knitting all throughout Europe when I was touring recently like about a month ago I was going through where should I even start like it was um <clears throat> Luxembourg and then Paris and then Brussels Amsterdam and then Cologne all within like a week and um, we were on a bus we were on trains and during that time I was you know making progress and making mistakes in dark places also I think it was like around Halloween when I tried knitting it without even looking at it with like my hood <laughs> completely zipped up and yeah it still works so it yeah works. that's what I'm knitting how many and... stitches? How many stitches? You Ooh, know I don't know. I, I'll count next row. <laughs> <laughs> so what knitwear are you wearing? Um, so I am wearing Le Bandana, <laughs> which is fresh up the needles um, since yesterday, as of yesterday. Cute. And um, it's really soft and cute and lovely. And um, I actually chose this color scheme because one of my Stephen West like mystery knit along colors um which I think I have over there I'll show you in a bit um it's very similar color palette and I wanted my husband to have something like matching yeah. but not matching you know yeah it's very important for gay couples to like matchy, matchy. Able to match but not match <laughs> I like that I like yeah it. and the base is volute um the brown and um, I threw in some Kumo um, for mm. I like. I bet and that feels so soft. Dreamy. Yeah, it, it makes it super soft, extra soft. And also I try to keep like Kumo only on like half of the bandana and the other like this. So depending on how you fold it, how you wrap it, you can see more of the blue or not see it at all. Okay, so speaking about how you wear the lip bandana, somebody just asked in the, in the chat, Elizabeth, um, Cunio, she asked if we have time, could we get some ideas on how to tie our bandana? So Nancy has it tied in the back with the V in the front. How do you wear it, Justin? I mean, I, for me, the, I, I would do the same, honestly, like yeah, this, and then do a little knot in the front like that. Oh, cute. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so usually I have like a silk scarf or something bigger, like a fula um, outside. So like this around the neck when, while I'm biking. And I then like how neat and tidy it is around your neck. And it actually makes the, the is it sea glass and kitsune, the two colors? Yeah, exactly. They cross over each other. It's really interesting. I like that a lot. It's cute. Um, Zach, what are you wearing? <laughs> um, well, I'm also wearing the bandana in a different fashion. Um, I tend to roll it and uh, oh. wear it like a little foulard. I'm inspired by my husband who wears little bandanas like this all the time. So I was super excited to knit this because um, he will be wearing this. But this was also the first time I'd ever done intarsia, if you can believe it. So um, I, it's very I simple. It. Nice. Um, and it's all wrinkled right now because I've rolled it up. But um, yeah. I have it in, I did it in. Um, uh, Verut. I want to always want to say Verute. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it mean the same thing. Maybe when we get to Julia, we can talk about what Verut and Verute mean. <laughs> exactly. um, and then I had a, some leftover. Um, this is your natural uh, base that. Uh, yeah. 
Twist Nouveau as well. So I had some left over. Um, what I really liked about uh, the bandana is that you could just sort of use it like a canvas and, you know, sort of try stuff out, you know, because usually when you're doing a sweater, if you're going to be committing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and then I've got a sweater on that was my mother's that she bought in 1986. Um, it's a vintage. I saw it at her house and she wasn't wearing it anymore. So um, as pendants, I had to knit her a, 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 a sweater vest, but. Um... Ooh, maybe we can uh, talk about the sweater vest. Oh, definitely. Actually, that was... We have the photos and, we, and you know, this is going to be fine guys. Julie's going to okay, give me a minute. I have, so I'm going to share my screen. I have to share the right one. This one, can you guys see it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, nice. So um, my mother had this other sweater that you can see on the bottom left, um, which was this uh, Ralph Lauren sweater that she bought in the 80s. Designed was, by oh, Nancy Vale. Exactly. I, I had no idea. I was like, oh, I'll just tap into Ravelry um, sweater vest, like um, uh, Fair Isle. A shawl collar and literally the sweater the sweater vest popped up by Nancy Vale and it turned out that she had created the pattern um uh for herself and then Ralph Lauren purchased the pattern um and then started manufacturing it so um I was able to literally knit <laughs> the same the same sweater vest uh that my mom my mother had purchased and you know in in some other colors um as well it was a lot of fun to put together though it was uh Fair Isle knit flat, which is <laughs> not, <it's> cute. <laughs> not cute. Not <laughs> cute. That's it's how we did episode. it in the we'll 80s. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, it's how we did it in the 80s. So, yeah. Yeah. By the oh, way, and that's yesterday. I took. The, I stole this photo from. <laughs> <laughs> that's Sorry. That's in his natural habitat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was literally at his house, like. Uh, weaving in ends <laughs> to the bandana while he was while he was knitting. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. All right, Julia, tell us what you're knitting and and explain to us how you wear a little bandana. So I just um, put mine the way Zach just described because I thought it was a great idea. I usually wear mine like you wear yours. Because I like that the, um, it does a little V shape in the back and that keeps my neck nice and warm. So when I'm at work and I'm a bit chilly, so I usually wear it this, this way and I even wear it like that under my coat. Because my coat, it has a big, big hood and everything, but sometimes the wind comes in a little bit through the through the color. So I usually wear mine like this, which is why I made a contrasting tip on one side so that I can have the two colors. And mine was also the first time I tried Intarja Ooh. and I absolutely loved it. So I just made, you don't know, I improvised a couple of shapes and then a couple of stripes just to try Intarja starting on one side and starting on the other. And then I got it. So I made a big intarja section here, mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed. And so now I want to do one that is crazy intarja, like the one that you have, just improvise tons of different shapes and try using three, four colors per row. And just because it is so, so, so easy. <laughs> It is. It really is. Once you understand the concept and get away from the idea of the tangle, a lot of people get stopped because they're like worried about the yarn getting tangled up. Well, also the thing is, if you just introduce, if you keep it super simple like this, you only have two colors that doesn't get tangled. If you do 10 colors per row, yes, maybe you're going to get a bit of tangle. But if you do two or three colors. Yeah. <laughs> and so even for a first time around, I think I watched one YouTube video and then that's it. It's wow. incredibly easy. It's mm -hmm. amazing. I love it. I find it so much easier even than color work, just fair, simple ferrile, because with ferrile, you have to make sure your tension um, always stays loose enough. And since I'm a li bit, little bit of a tight knitter, sometimes that's difficult for me. Mm. 
Whereas for intarsia, you just have to twist your yarns and you're good to go. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm knitting another bandana. This is not my second one. I think this is the fifth I'm knitting, but the other ones I knit for samples for you. Um, I'm making a big version of a bandana, which I'm calling the Benda Shawl. So this is, is bigger than the, the jumbo striped version of Oh, Lubin. yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, because this yeah. is next to my little bandana. Yeah. Um, and I'm just using the basic recipe, and I'm keeping all the same number of stitches and stuff. I'm just using two strands of Alix and one strand of Little Kumo. And I'm using a five millimeter needle. So I just made my gauge bigger, basically. And because I really wanted to try Alix and Little Kumo, and it is just like, oh, I can't, yeah. can't even say how incredibly soft <laughs> so and wonderful soft. it is. So, so soft. So anyway, yeah, that's what I'm knitting. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Um, so I put on my little bandana to show you how I wear it. I wear it like Girl Scout with my little, like, just like this. It always makes me think of being a Girl Scout. I remember like tying and learning how to tie square knot. So I tie square knot in the front. And what I really love about designing with little bandana is I try to do some of the fun and interesting intarsia on the ends here because I have that idea that I'm going to tie it in a knot and I'll have a really cool situation with the square knot. So this was one that I just made when I was traveling through Japan. And it's a kind of, um, it kind of, I can tell you exactly where I was in each section that I was knitting. And then I got to the end and I added all these like kind of crazy colors in here, inspired by a David Hockney um, exhibit that I visited when I was in Tokyo. So when I tie this one, it looks really fun in the front because the square knot's like all super multicolored and you get like this like great pop of like neon green right here, which is a color I never wear and right next to Flora Morganite. And I just love how it looks like this. And it's very like, it catches people's attention. I was wearing it at Rhinebeck and a lot of people came up to me and they're like, ooh, ooh, you know, they could see my scarf and they're like, I like that. So if you're gonna knit the bandana, think about, putting some of the fun intarsia shapes at the beginning because the, the shawl begins here and then you start knitting and you can, and also you don't have a lot to knit. So if you want to do like little shapes and stuff like that, there's not a lot to deal with. Um, this is my Le Bandana basic intarsia that I just released on Ravelry. So if you're thinking about trying intarsia or want to give it a go, this is a great um, way to, to dig into intarsia. Um, I wanted to show you what I have on my needles. And you probably have seen it because I've been kind of showing it in my um, on my Instagram. This is a crazy kind of all over intarsia thing that I started when I was in Rhinebeck. I had a set amount of like of my favorite colors, and I thought about like making squares because this is one of the easiest shapes to knit in intarsia, actually. And I just made there is like um, a calculation to the order of colors that I'm using here, and I will definitely chart this out. But as you can see, I wanted to make sure that pink and yellow had its moment throughout the whole <laughs> neon um, colors that I'm mixing around. The backside looks scary, but it really isn't. There's just a lot of ends because I haven't woven any of them in, except that I have woven them in here in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You can see um, it, when you weave the ends in, you no longer see them and it makes the wrong side just as beautiful as the right side like this. And I can't wait to finish this. I'm hoping to finish this um, while I'm on Christmas break. Because can you imagine what the little square knot's going to look like when I tie these two little ends together with all these colors? So that's what I've been knitting. And that's what I've got on my needles. Um, I kind of wanted to catch up a little bit with Zach and Justin because I haven't seen these guys very much over the last year. And I, you know, I don't know if you guys know that they're, they are professional opera singers and they're knitting all around the world. And so I thought that we could like catch up with Zach and just like, tell us like, where have you been? What have you been doing? And what have you been knitting while you've been out on the road? <laughs> um, well, uh, I'll start with the knitting. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Amy actually, um, 
I, I'm test knitting a sweater for her, which I don't know if, am I allowed to tell people about you are, this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it's a striped sweater uh, with a saddle shoulder, um, a sort of constructed uh, saddle shoulder. So it sits nice um, uh, and carries the weight here. Um, and I used um, the same color lichen on Wensley Worsted and Cory Worsted. So it gets this um, very subtle striping uh, with the white base and the gray base. Um, it was a uh, lichen was a color that uh, I talked to Amy about for ages. I was like, oh, I'd love like a kind of cooler grayish green. And so I was when she when she uh, had created the color, I was like, oh, I want a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I've just been traveling a lot. I was just on tour. Um, a lot in uh, Spain and France and Belgium. And then I was in the United States in New York, uh, did a recital at the Morgan Library mm. and also at the Jordan Hall in Boston and at Salle Bourgie in, uh, in Montreal. Um, so I had lots of time. I, I was working on the bandana, which was great because I needed mindless uh, sort of uh, stuff I could just knit on the train <laughs> and on the plane um and also brought this along with me as well so that was that was essentially it and then uh, i just have a little window of time in paris until i leave to go to the netherlands tomorrow to start a christmas oratorio tour exciting i'm yeah. i mean i was just on tour this year too and it's it's exhausting so i feel exhausted for you just listening to your end of your plans here um <laughs> we are hoping to continue knit hour with these guys maybe they'll be able to join us when they're on tour if they can squeeze it in between their busy schedules we would love to have you guys back again oh it's so fun thanks i mean it's it's really nice to just like sit down and and think think and talk about something else besides uh besides singing and 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 to see all all the people knitting people in the community it's nice when i'm out and about and justin's had this happen too where you know people show up with their shawls and uh, at some of our uh, performances and uh, you know they know us from from the knitting world which is really fantastic and oh we get to my talk gosh about... tell us about a memorable Aww. encounter with a knitter when you've been you know out singing um i've had a couple of um when i was in portland oregon which is actually where i i learned how to knit i was um i was there on a um a messiah tour and uh i saw the mezzo soprano next to me knitting but whenever i returned there there's a very intense big community of knitters there and um uh so when i returned back there um i met a, a couple of them that came to the show and had seen my instagram um and Justin, you met somebody in the Netherlands recently, right? Or in, no, in Belgium? Belgium. No, Amsterdam, Sanae, maybe? Yeah, Sanae. She, I've seen her, she's seen her too, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, or when I was in Japan um, and performing at Kabukiza, um, I actually had people sending me yarn backstage um, because the Japanese knitting community, like I also have this um, pattern that was a Kabuki, pattern that somebody sent me with the yarn to make the the this kabuki cowl and oh, amazing um, with a letter that i had to have translated because i my i don't speak japanese but um the the japanese knitters are hardcore like they, they are they're hardcore and they're extremely generous and um it's just wonderful to interact with them um so justin tell us where you've been this year yeah. well i had to actually look at my calendar to see where i actually was because I don't think about where I am at the moment, you know, I just go to work and perform and yeah, but actually earlier this year, Zach and I were in a production together in Montpellier, which feels like it was a lifetime ago, but it was only in June, yep. so only six months ago. And since then I uh, performed in Chicago, um, I did a recital in Normandy, which was really nice, um, summer vacation in Greece. Uh, I was in Venice again, singing at La Fenice. Um, oh, there's also a knitter around there who came to see the show. And um, where did I go after? Um, I did a concert tour that I just told you about, you know, throughout like Luxembourg and all that. And um, I was just in Monaco until like two, three days ago, um, rehearsing for the next opera that's well, not the next opera, but like the one after the next. Um, so I have a production sandwich between in the middle of 
another production. So I'm doing Julius Caesar in Monaco, which is going to go on in January. And we have a few weeks off for Christmas. So naturally, I'm doing another show. <laughs> I'm doing Hansel and Gretel, Singing the Witch in Germany in Wiesbaden. And I'm leaving for that in two days. Woo! So yeah, that's fun. And um, yeah, but well, as soon as I got back gosh. from Monaco, I cast this on. It took me literally, um, literally two days, um, which was so fast and awesome. And also, <laughs> funny thing, but not really funny. I had this like huge gastro thing, and I thought I had like appendicitis, <laughs> so I was like dying. Nearly went to the ER, but then um, I woke up in the morning and it was like it was better. So I was like, okay, this is getting better. <laughs> Maybe today's a knitting day in bed, <laughs> and I cast this on, and then I got to like, like from here to here in one sitting. I got <laughs> with each. Isn't that satisfying though? This is what I love about La Bandana. You can really crank them out really yeah. quickly. Um, yeah. And also like somewhere in the middle, Zach texted and he was like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm knitting the bandana and I'm on the 76th um, stitch. <laughs> like, so I was like here. Yeah. It was just um about to reach the 80 stitch halfway point for the regular size. And yeah, that happened. And then I made myself some like congee rice um soup <laughs> afterwards. So that was fun. And um yeah, in Monaco during rehearsal, I am knitting this one, but also I'm knitting um lace shawls for some of my castmates yes. because I, love... I have not seen any of these lace shawls. I knew you were going to do this because you told me about it, but. Yeah. So I think this is like sixth or seventh lace shawl I'm making for a colleague of Ooh, mine. Wow. And wow. this one, um, I just looked up the pattern name. It's the Rosarian shawl or something by um, Anna Victoria. Um, it's the hold on let me look up yeah Anna Victoria by the lily pond is the like the it's gorgeous and are you using volute this is volute yes what size needles are you knitting that on um right now these are 4.0 oh, a 4.5 nice. actually 4.5 okay nice. my well, 4.0 pretty quickly yeah actually um I am nearly halfway yeah. Love it. And volute also stretches like a lot. And um, so it's going to be like a pretty decent sized shawl. And um, I've been following the, because I'm not using the exact gauge, but I've been following the percentage of the yarn usage. Hmm. Um, and I'm still on my first ball. Um, volute comes in 50 gram balls. And um, I am not quite done with the um, first ball, but I'm slightly past the halfway point. So very nice. Yes. Very nice. Nancy, yeah. do you knit lace? Yeah. Well, I used I I yeah. I wrote a book called Knitting Brioche Lace. Oh, yeah, but it's brioche <laughs> lace. But I mean, yeah, no, I've yeah, I've knit lace. Yeah. Do you brioche fi everything? Oh no, no. I mean I I haven't done brioche and tarja in like two years. It's true. Yeah. Brioche and Tarsha. I think my brain would melt. No, Have you works. done Brioche and Tarsha? Yeah. No, it works. I've, I've, in the very, very first, in the first Brioche book I wrote, I thought it would be the only one. So I put every kind of little technique in there, you know, knitting technique combined with Brioche. And so I did this scarf that I don't think anybody's made. But it's, no, it's, it's very doable. It's, it, you know, if you need to make Brioche automatic and not think about it and then, uh, you know, you can entarsh it, you can lace it, you can do anything with it, sir. Yeah. Okay, that's the next level right there. I see a stack of knits behind you. What is that situation? Well, I, I mean, this was about entarsh. So I got out some old, really old stuff. And then I've got, I've got the, the latest thing that I just finished yesterday. Show should we do a retrospective tell. and start with the old stuff or start well, with the new is, stuff? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Zach, you like, the, this is, um, I want to make that. Yeah. Is that the, it looks like the Christmas trees. Yes. Yeah. It looks like trees and they're basically just little stacks of triangles, you know, three stacks. And what you do is at the bottom, at the very bottom, you just stagger the stacks mm. so that they're not right next to each other. You have, see, you, some of the triangles go up 
this in this direction, the other ones go with the mm -hmm. point on the top. And so there's there's lots of variation going on. And this is, of course, just you know, stash buster. I mean, you know, there's no hair, there's mm -hmm. there's plain wool, there's boot clay, there's everything that I had. And I made this in the, I guess it was the 80s. And I actually wrote a number of articles about it for uh, Ariadna magazine in in the Netherlands and for <laughs> A threads magazine I wrote about intarsia, you know, and this, you know, uses this whole thing is small areas of intarsia. Can you turn it inside out? I always want to admire the other side. Yeah, it's, oh, it's upside down. It's okay. But you can. Oh, see. okay. I love it. So what's your method for weaving in ends? Like, well, I, I try to weave in the beginning end as I'm knitting, you know, and, and that way you've eliminated that one end. Mm. But I yeah. also, I mean, okay, the way I learned to make sweaters was in pieces, knitting back and forth. So that's very natural for me. And um, mm. I don't mind just taking an evening. I'll knit, you know, this much with all in Tarsha and I'll just weave in ends one evening. Yeah. You that's know. what I do. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just another thing you do. So, uh, yeah. And I mean, I've got, you know, this is a typical, this is a, this is very similar. This is another all over in Tarsha. I'm not going to show you all of this, but you know. <gasps> oh, falling blocks. That's great. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. I love it. And it, you the know, colors again, are so good. It, it's just, um, yeah, each little section has its own little piece of yarn. And what I did was I figured out that this little section right here needs like a, a yard and this yeah. one needs a yard. And then this one might need a yard and a half. So I would just cut a yard and a half or a yard. And so then what happens is you don't have a lot. I mean, you've got ends, of course, that you have to weave in, but, and you can see the inside. It's gorgeous. Mm. You know, but yeah. And it's not, you know, it's not that thick because it's all just one level, one layer. You don't have yeah. the floats carrying across it. Yeah. So somebody in the chat asks, are those calf calf facet? That's how yeah. that pronounces his name, right? Yes. Or your own design. These are all Nancy Marchant designs. Yeah, they're they're my designs. But I I mean Kafe has made a baby block or whatever, tumbling block. I mean, I think every, you know, tumbling block, it's a common, common it's topic. a common motif. I've okay. I've seen it a lot before. So these yeah. trees and and I've done a lot of like stacked triangle kind of things and stacked shapes kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, he he also did that. I mean, yeah. Did he influence me? Yes, he did. Very much so. Me too. <laughs> I so tell me some of your new stuff. Oh, okay. I I mean I, I'm just gonna this is what I just finished. This is a shawl. Oh, I love this. So, you know, Nancy and I talk on a regular basis and she showed this to me last week and it was like just the point. <laughs> and what I what I kind of wanted to do with this, uh, I have, th this is 19 different colors. And so I, I put it in a basket light to dark. And mm. so I started out with the light and then I kind of added the medium. And then, so what you see is, you know, you could see where the light hits is with mixed with light. And then on the these edges down here, it's dark and dark. Yes. You know, so you get those different, uh, and then we get back to light at the, at these edges. And I mean, this is intarsia and stranded knitting. Mm. And I'm actually, I'm going to bring this pattern out. Yay. Wow. I've got all these woven patterns and everybody's just when's the pattern when's the pattern i'm like i don't yeah. know you know but i That's am me. going to bring this one out probably in the next two weeks even okay and okay, then this guys, is, get ready you heard yeah, Nancy this say is it. also mm. the same pattern but this is then a cowl mm. so if you get you know you get started and you get tired of making a big one because the thing about this kind of intarsia it takes a long time mm. it's slow you know and you get really tired of it so if you want to you can stop you know, and make yourself a cowl. And this, of course, uses four colors. And that then the color so arrangement just uh, makes these kind of like, yeah, it's almost like uh, medieval, to me, like medieval, you know, carvings the way they, yeah, I don't know. Does that one have a background? Yeah. You okay. Can see, it's got that black 
Mm -hmm. background. It looks like an optical illusion because it looks like it's just like floating on top of, yeah. (laughs) But see, this has one too, but this has got like a a very almost light brown. Mm. You know, I try to use like a neutral color if it's dark or gray or, you know, that kind of thing. What weight of yarn did you use for those? Fingering. Okay, nice. Very nice. So don't hesitate to pop any questions into the chat. I'm keeping one eye on the chat and I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, the um, chat is pretty active. Uh, Pat just said, I could see that pattern of Nancy's doing it on, on Le Bandana to get the technique down. Oh, great idea. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great idea because it's such mm-hmm. a small canvas and it's really easy to manipulate. Absolutely. Um, Andrea somebody... Wilson asked, what is that beautiful cowl that Amy is wearing? Oh, this one. Yes. Okay. So this is um, a little sneak peek for you guys. Um, You may have saw earlier this year, we released some beanies online. Um, So this is part of my ready to wear line that I'm sort of launching, but not really just (laughs) work. I'm just playing around. And so we made beanies, but we also made cowls too. And these are going to be coming next year oh, Ethelene have- has the beanie and tempête as well <laughs> say again oh, yeah Ethelene has the beanie and tempête <laughs> oh nice well now there's going to be a matching cowl to go with it if you would like um I was inspired I picked a really simple stitch pattern of garter stitch because I love garter stitch garter stitch just feels really cozy and we used um, Cory confetti. So this is our recycled yarn. So it has all these like little bits and nups. And I thought I loved the way the garter stitch looked. And then I paired it with um, a really nice basket weave pattern. I got inspired by a sweater that Nancy made earlier this year in mm-hmm. Nancy's speckled sweater, which is one of our confetti colors called Fleck. Mm-hmm. And so I loved how that looked as well. And as you can see, the construction's very, very simple. Um, it's just a, it's just a long rectangle that's been knit, and then they sew. Um, we just kind of sew this off kilter here a little bit mm. to create this kind of interesting shape. I um, you can wear it with whatever design you want in the front. Um, I'm gonna wear it this way. I like to put it so that I have the point down like that. So this mm. is how I was wearing it earlier. And it's really nice because it really covers the neck and keeps you warm. And I'm all about making those accessories that are easy to throw on. And I love cowls. So the cowl doesn't really have a name. I think it's just going to be called the Vietnamese Knitted Cowl. And it's going to be coming out as a ready-to-wear product that you can buy on our online store. Um, if you want to hand-knit this, we don't have a pattern for this. I mean, obviously, maybe we could work on one. But I think that this is just for you if you want to like have instant gratification and grab a grab a cowl online, you can. So these will be arriving early next year. So yeah, there we go. Um, I wanted to ask Nancy a technique question for intarsia. As you can see, I don't really do bobbins because I, when you knit intarsia, you like to wind the yarn onto little plastic. Yeah, do I have anything? I'm trying to think if I have, in, oh, I might have something with bobbins hanging on it just so people can see. Oh no, that's, I, I'm somebody, I, I take stuff apart. You know, if I'm not going to finish it, I take it apart. I, oh. I don't. So I have nothing with bobbins hanging on it. Well, we'll find a picture. When we put this up on YouTube, we'll throw it up so we can okay. see what we're talking about. Well, it's on my Instagram account. You can see the. Oh, the yeah, bobbin. you've got that. I'll take your picture. Can I borrow your picture and put, throw oh, it up? Yeah. <laughs> um, I been, di- been tying these like what I think are little butterflies. But when I yeah. pull the yarn, it doesn't come out very smoothly. <laughs> So you're I know winding it correctly. Can you show us how to sure. wind it correctly? I'm going to follow along while you do it. I knew she was going to ask me this. So I have a ball of yarn. We, but what we you prepared want, her. You want to just, you know, you want to hold the end and then you just wrap a butterfly. And the reason you do that is that helps the yarn from getting tangled, getting caught on. And when you say a butterfly, it's like you're doing the figure eight. Yes. Okay. You're, you're going around it like that. Okay. Then when you're done, what you want to do is you don't want to lose this end. So I'm just going to hold this together like that. And with the, the, the end coming out of the ball, you're going to make a backward loop and you're going to put it over the little, little skein that you've made. You're going to pull that tight and that little backward loop 
you know, should hold. Now, see, I see that the backward loop should hold it. It, mm. it, it could come apart, which is why I use bobbins. But, you know, if you use sticky yarn, it'll, it'll pretty much hold it there. And then you've got your initial tail that you can just pull out <gasps> as you go. That's easier. And then you do have to, you know, tighten your little right. backward loop. And this will be cut off, of course. But, you know, it, this should just come right out. Yep, it did. I was oh. winding it around my hand like this. Nah, you gotta, mm. you gotta and then do making the, the butterfly, eight, so and I was just like, "This tangle. isn't working." <laughs> yeah, no, you do the figure eight, and then it doesn't tangle so much. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. Zach, when you knit the entire on your bandana, what did you do with your ends? How did you manage them? You just like le left it connected to the ball. I was hanging loose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> essentially, just the way that this was made, I could just leave it connected to the ball because I was only doing. Yeah, uh, if you have two two colors. Yeah, two colors are much easier on the ball. Yeah, I, I have can. a little method that I do when I do intarsia, and mm -hmm. it's really random, but I don't like to make um, too many, you know, little bits and pieces. So I keep it in the ball, but then I leave everything laid out on a circular, like, plate or, I don't know, like a like thing, a Susan? like this. And then when I switch them and twist, I switch it on the table and then mm. I carry that entire table around that's like uh or the plate um around as my you know whip station I love and... it doesn't that remind you of something didn't someone tell us that they had like a plateau of yes. yarn that they carried yes. around with them when I was in Stillwater Minnesota this woman she brought her knitting she had a huge bag and inside it she had a tray with handles and she had her yarn and she she got herself all set up. I was watching her. She took out the tray. She laid all of her yarn. And then she started knitting her intarsia. And then it was time to move outside to go sit with her friends. She just picked up her tray, moved yeah. outside, sat down and just kept knitting and everything like that. And I was just like, I need that. That's what I need. It's great because you can do it like while watching TV on the sofa. And then you can take it straight to the bed without getting anything else tangled. Wow. And also you can manage the direction and the twisting like really visually large without anything like hanging around. So I personally do it that way. And then when I need to flip it, like, so if I'm not knitting it around, or if I need to like flip it, then I just put the working yarn like um, whip on the other side and then I flip the um, tray around. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That does make sense. That's You great. know, you can also just cut use use like three meter lengths yeah true you know? and you'll just have to you can pull them out every time and then yeah. when that's up then you add you know you just need yeah, a little more yeah. to you know to keep going and you can just keep adding length mm -hmm. that way too i mean yeah there are a gazillion different ways to handle your yarn with but he says that there's clips magic clips the magic clips. well you can you know those little ikea bag clips mm-hmm you oh. can, oh, you yeah, can you make can. a ball, but then you have to unclick it, let out some yarn, and click it. Okay, no. That's the thing. You want to be able to just pull it. Oh. Yeah. And the, the yes. bobbins that I use, why don't I have, can I go get, I'll go get Okay, okay. Well, she'll get them. Um, while she's there, someone else has asked a question in the chat. It says, what happens to the main color during intarsia? I'm confused about it since it's not your typical color work. So I can answer this question while we're waiting for Nancy to come by. So imagine that you're knitting the basic intarsia and you're starting here. You're going to be working with your first color, main color, which is French gray. Okay. And then you want to introduce the pink in. So what happens is I introduced the pink on the wrong side here. And I came back and I started knitting like four stitches with gray. And I just let it hang down. And I'm going to twist it with the pink and then knit the pink on over. And what happens is the gray just hangs there and waits until you come back to pick it back up again. So when I got to the end of the row of the pink here, I turned around, did my eye cord, came all the way back and then picked up, I did my little twist, picked up the gray and then knit on with the gray at the end. So that's, I mean, Zach's is a really good example because it's like straight line squares and you can see mm. where he just went, turn around, came back. And then it's all about twisting and it makes this really beautiful, this is what the wrong side looks like. And this is where the twisting is happening. 
Mm. And by twisting, what she means is you drop the, the, the yarn that you're just finished with, you drop that on the top of the one you're going to pick up, you pick the other one up from underneath and you go across. Mm. That crosses the yarns as you go up. Yeah, it felt like to me, kind of like when you're catching yarn in Fair Isle. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You're essentially just yeah. putting the other yarn over it. So it the one it. Over the new, pick up the new one from underneath. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you're, okay, these are the little bobbins that I use. Uh, okay, there's yarn wound on it. But what you see is, oh, sorry. What you see is it's it's got a little clip on it. So I just unclick, clip it let out some yarn and I clip it back. That's actually really nice too. That makes, keeps it and tight. These are really lightweight, you know, mm -hmm. some bobbins. I mean, if you've got 50 bobbins like that one Charles got, it's heavy, you know, just the plastic, the amount of plastic. So these are really light. They're really thin, you know. That's awesome. They're, they're available from what's called BB Craft, B E E B E E Craft. It's China. It's from China. Okay, but we're gonna look it up and we'll try to find a link. They're, long, they're, they're, they're reliable and and these things are cheap. Love that. Love BB Craft. And you uh, you type in you know you search for knitting bobbins and you'll see this shape. You get forty of these and you get like 20 of these great big bobbins that you'll never use, but that's the only way they're packaged. And it costs like eight euros or six euros or something. I don't know. But nice. Very nice. I wanted to kind of point out to the sweaters behind me because just an, an homage to my knitting guru friend, Nancy, I have this special design right here that she made for me. <laughs> right here. Inspired by like one of my ace and jig dresses or something yep. you you knit this during the pandemic and it just like showed up at my doorstep <laughs> I was like oh my god what is this so this is also intarsia technique yeah it is such a cool design and the fit is amazing yeah yeah so she used Mondine for this one and this pattern doesn't exist and I've been I've been I don't know do you think it'll ever exist Nancy no no, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you can see that uh, th the dark color, the background color, is carried all the way across. Yeah. You know, and then the the zigzag of the little gold blocks or whatever that is what the intarsia is. You know, that's those are carried up. That's a separate ball of yarn for each one of those sections. It could have been done probably with stranded knitting, but then you've got that big. I just yeah, don't, you know, I don't like all these yeah. big floats right here. Yeah. And I think that it would just, and I don't like when you so connect nice to wear, them, you know, the floats. I don't like when that's connected, you get that little color place there. So mm. no, it's really good. There is a little special. Oh yeah. Thing in the back. And maybe it's backwards for you guys. I don't know if you can. No, see. we can see oh, it okay. for LBA from NM. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. And we said my heart just broke. And just show it off because it is one of my, one of my prized possessions in my closet. <laughs> and then we have a really sweet cardigan that I actually love wearing. I wear this all the time. All right, come up here. Be a good girl right there. Um, this is Nancy's speckled sweater. So this is the confetti colorway that we made using Nancy's vintage stash. <laughs> um, we drove up to, at the time you were living in Amsterdam, right? When we came. I was moving, yeah. We we're moving. Yeah. And she gave us like, 80 kilos of yarn <laughs> and we processed it and we put it into this beautiful like brown uh, like it's based off of a brown cordale fiber and made this um yarn and this sweater is called warmth by kate oates and it's one of my favorites it's got incredible pockets it's really fun to knit and it's a perfect canvas for confetti but yeah so definitely this is nancy speckled sweater in all of its glory in this cardigan here. So I thought that before that we ended our knit hour because we're coming up to the end of the hour. You know, we I think we have about 10 minutes, but um, I wanted to go through and show um, because this one is called Le Bandana Party. And so as you can see, all of my friends have come and brought their bandanas and showed them off. And I thought that I would show you some of the other bandanas that we've made over the last, I think I released Le Bandana in June. 
Mm-hmm. And I think I started obsessively knitting it really like around my birthday in May. So I've been knitting bandanas nonstop. So we have a whole bunch. And so I thought I would show them off. So this was one that I knit last summer when I was on vacation with my family in Volut using two colors. It's a sea glass and anemone. All of these are knit to the size of the basic um, mm-hmm. intarsia recipe. So I went to 80 stitches here. Basic First, recipe. Like the perfect size. I like it. It's just like the small little bandana that I like to wear around my neck. Um, I ride my bicycle a lot in Paris. And so this is like the perfect little accessory to have around your neck to tuck inside of your coat and stuff, especially right now it's so cold. Um, Here's one that Julia knit. So this was done in volute and she used three colors and we just kind of split the quadrants out a little bit and it was really fun, really, really fun to knit. And this one you knit to 80 stitches as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Julia, I think she knitted a little bit of looser gauge than I did. And so this is like a little bit bigger. But that's because I'm a tight knitter. So I thought that I think I went up to a 3.75 millimeter needle using volute by itself just to make sure it didn't um, end up super small. Right, right. And I used a 3.5 millimeter on mine. So it's a little bit of a tighter fabric. Um, so some of the other ones, let's see, this is a really fun one. So this one's called a little bandana faded. And I did some fun fading by marling through with, um, Helix and Felix. Here's one that we did in Sport Nouveau. So you need, Mm. I like to use sport weight for this, but as you can see, Julie is using a heavyweight yarn for this and Volute is a light fingering weight. No, it's a heavy thing. No. Let me say it's light. It is a light fingering weight. It's yeah. a light fingering weight yarn. So you can you can play around with the gauge. Honestly, I would love to see somebody do it with like a DK or an Aaron. I'm going to do one in big Kumo, which is our 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 Aaron <laughs> weight um, Kumo that we just released. So this one's in Sport Nouveau, mm. and this one's a really basic one. I think I'm just going to write my notes up on um, Ravelry so that people can knit this one. This one would be really great for a beginner, as well. So I just did the same kind of concept of stripes that I did in basic intarsia. And then here at the end, I just ended with um, a green tip. So this one is using an entire skein of volute. So this one's a jumbo bandana. So if you wanted to buy one skein of volute and use all of it, this is what the size of the, the bandana would be. And it's pretty big. Mm-hmm. This, one, this one is pretty, it's pretty big. Yeah, much bigger. Yeah, yeah much bigger. It's really nice to wear. Here's another one that I made when I was on tour um, over the spring. And it's actually really, it's like a diary of all the places I can make. So I remember exactly where I was as I was knitting all of this. And I kind of use this as a swatch because I was kind of practicing techniques. And what I got really excited about was this technique that I was using here on the end with these like little squares that were kind of staggered in places. And so I took that idea of the staggered square and just put the squares into here. And then I've got another idea for another one after I finish this one. Um, We have this one that Lolita knit and I kind of stole from her. So this is like a jumbo stripe version, but a small (laughs) version, right? And so this is just using Helix held double. Most of these that I'm showing you are either Helix or Felix held double all the way through. Um, What am I missing? What am I missing? Here we go. We've got some more here. We did one in silk tweed. So this one's really nice. This one has a very different feel when you're wearing it. I think I need to wear it the way Zach's wearing it to make this. Yes. Because this is like 100%. So did you roll the point on the inside? How did you do this? Um, I don't know. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Hold on a um, yeah, I think the point is on the inside because I yeah. wanted because I have the stripes up on the top. <gasps> yeah, see, this is how I will wear the silk tweed. So band. cute. <gasps> that is really cute. And put the little square knot right there. There you go. I love it. This is, we're gonna call this the Zach. You know how we tie. You know, it. are there are there the people that are, are there people that uh, have knit this already that are in the the crowd? I'm sure that there is. I'm we could sure all go to gallery is. view and see. Let them. me let me see if I can switch back to gallery. And I think. Do we have right. to go to gallery too? If yeah, you but you can see more people on, the gallery. Can you, everyone put their bandana on and maybe if you have your camera turned off, turn your camera on. Let me 
thing is, is like, I think that we're all spotlighted. So I think in the end, it, we, we remain spotlighted. So let me unspotlight everybody. Unspotlight. Okay, so if you've got your bandana on, go ahead and put it on, turn your camera on, and we have four pages of attendees. You guys are awesome. I can't oh, nice. believe this. Oh, look at all these bandanas. Oh my God, I'm scrolling through and looking at everyone. Kathleen, face. Lois. Yay, Sarah, how cute. Lisa, Lisa. Ben is there. Christine. Carrie. Oh, I see yours, Carrie. It's so cute. Jen, I see yours. Oh, she's got a long Zach. She's doing like the long. Ooh, that's cute. I like that. Um, okay, let me try a thing. Cause I think that we can bring everyone to the front page. If all of you who've got a bandana on can hold your hand up, I think, and you push the hold your hand up thing on, in, uh, not Instagram, on Zoom, it'll bring you all to the front of the page. So you have to go to your window and select. Oh, there we go. Jen did it. Hi, Jen. And you guys all raise your hand. You'll all pop up to the front of the, is that working? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think people are raising their hand in the. Oh, you have to raise oh. your hand virtually with Zoom. Yeah, you have to do a little hand thing. Those that see, and yeah. You have to click on reaction. Is that what it's called in English? Yes. So down at the bottom of your Zoom screen, click under reactions and click raise hand. Mm. And everyone who has their bandana on will show up. Oh, nice. There we go. Now I can see it. Who is that? I see your Sylvia. You copied me on mine. Let me put it on. There. Now Sylvia and I are matchy matchy. <laughs> Look at all those bandanas. You guys are so cute. Really nice. Wow. I really love this. Thank you. Okay, well, I think that this is the end. We've come to the end of our knit hour. I really want to keep these to an hour long because I'm going to try to squeeze these like knit nights into like maybe a lunch hour or something. And if like, if my friends can come join me, that's awesome if they can't, but like, we just want to keep these kind of short. So let me pull everyone back in here. Hi, Julia. Add spotlight. Now, normally this should be all of us on speaker view back on screen. So thank you guys for joining Knit Hour with La Bine May, our very first. So this is our very first inaugural um, edition of Knit Hour. We will definitely be doing this again. I don't know where Justin and Zach will be. We might be playing around with some time zone um, jumping, <laughs> but we'll figure this out. We definitely would love to hear if you guys like this hour of the day. Um, we can definitely go earlier in the day for Paris for us because right now it's 6.30 p.m. in Paris. So definitely let us know um, in the comments below or like in the chat right now if this works for you. And we will definitely be doing this again. So thanks so much for joining and I hope that you guys have a great weekend of knitting. I see a whole bunch of comments coming in. So yeah. Thank oh, thanks everyone. Everyone's saying thank you and bye. So have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. 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 -bye.